And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Ryan Metzler. Hey everyone, it's Ryan Metzler here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the newest title from Minion Games. We're going to look at The Manhattan Project. And this was a Kickstarter title that they brought out, or they finished a little while ago, and it's getting ready to hit uh, the shelves now, and everybody's going to get their copies, and then it'll go out into stores. Uh, but this is a worker placement game that is about building atomic bombs. Uh, you're going to be placing workers on the board in order to get materials to build bombs, and then you're going to be uh, using those materials to convert them into the bombs in order to score victory points. Uh, your options on the game are going to be place workers or retrieve workers, but it does not in a way that's somewhat interesting. So why don't we take a look at how the game uh, accomplishes this interesting feel, and then I'll give you my opinions on it afterwards. So here's nearly everything that you get with the Manhattan Project, except for one thing, or a set of things. And that's going to be each player's individual player board. Uh, I'm only going to show this now, and I won't have it out for the rest of the review, but uh, you'll get the basic concept. There are spots on here that are card-shaped, and these are going to be spaces for each player's buildings that they're going to get as they build them. Additionally, along the side here, you're going to see a track, or it's actually two tracks, one for bombers and one for fighters. And these are going to be uh, types of planes that can be used throughout the game to attack your opponents uh, and to prevent yourself from being attacked. And you're going to have two markers, a fighter and a bomber marker. Uh, and they're going to start on one here, so you'll start with one of each. And these are going to prevent you from being attacked or to allow you to attack other players. But enough about the player boards, let's move on to the actual game board. In addition to their own player board, each player is going to have a couple of different things. They're going to have generic workers, which look like this. They're men in overalls, and they're going to be just basic workers that you use for basic type of actions. Uh, each player will have four of those, and they're going to start the game with ten money. Additionally, they're going to have some counters out on the board on different locations. They have uranium, plutonium, and a spy track, which will be resources you can use and a way to hurt your opponent or to use your opponent's buildings. In a generic stock, players are going to have two other types of workers. You can see them here. We have scientists here, and we have construction workers here. And they're going to be different types of workers that you will gain throughout the game in order to perform special actions, uh, and they'll be required to do those actions at some point throughout the game. There are also some generic workers. Uh, these are not player color workers, and you can earn these for special actions, but they will only be temporary for you to use in the game. On a player's turn, they're only going to do one of two things. They're either going to place workers or retrieve workers. And placing workers would involve first putting a worker out onto this board, and then placing a worker on any of your buildings that you've built. There are several different places to place workers on the board, and we'll start these in order. There's the construction space, and this can hold any type of worker, uh, and they're going to allow you to build buildings. Now, using the generic or the scientists gives you no benefit, and you would build any of these buildings up at the top. There are three major types of buildings in the game. Here you can only see two of them, and I'll show you the third momentarily, but there are three major types. There are mines, uh, and a generic card layout is going to show you how many workers you need to place on it to activate it. This would be two of any type of worker, and what you're going to get in response. And you'd get two yellow cake here for doing that, and yellow cake is going to be a resource you're going to use to turn into other things. There are also factories. Factories are going to give you either some type of plane, in this case bombers, and or money. So you would place one of any type of worker on here, and you're going to get one of these two things. Finally, there are universities. I guess I do have all three out here. And universities are going to allow you to use a worker in order to get more workers. So for example, you'd place any one worker here, and you would get a scientist from the generic supply back into your area. So this is how you would get your workers or generic workers into your area. So if I played that and I, I used that card later, I could take my scientist and add it to my supply. In order to build these, you're going to place your worker, uh, and then you're going to pay whatever the cost is above the card. So you can see it's two, or if you use an engineer to build it, it's free. Three, and if you use an engineer to build it, it's free, and then they go up in cost from there. The last three spots are going to require a bribe. So if you build any of these spots, not only are you going to pay the amount listed above the card, but you're also going to put one coin from the generic supply into the bribe area. Whenever anybody takes the lowest card in the thing, they're going to get all of the money out of the bribe area as well. So that's an incentive to take the cards that maybe nobody really wants. The rest of the areas require less explanation, so we're going to go over those real quickly. We're going to skip airstrike and repair. The factory area is going to let you get either fighters, bombers, or more money. 
And in order to do this, you're going to put a worker here, and you're going to get either you're going to get whatever these resources that's shown. Uh, and fighters are going to be used to destroy your opponent's fighters and your opponent's bombers. Well, bombers are going to be used to deal damage to enemies' buildings when they have no fighters. Uh, and damage would simply be tokens that go onto a building. So if I had built this building and I had no fighters, my opponent could use their bombers to damage it. Uh, and I would have damage on here, making this building useless until I repaired it. Uh, this spot here is going to give you five money in exchange for three yellow cake. This one gives you five money, but you have to give two money to everyone else, or two money goes to everyone else from the supply. And this one requires you to use a scientist or an engineer and gives you three money. You'll note that these three spots also have the bribe icon, so anytime you use them, you're going to put one money on the bribe. The mines require workers to be placed on them in order to get yellow cake. So you would place a worker here and pay five money, get four yellow cake. This one you place a worker and you get three yellow cake, but everyone else also gets one. And this one you're going to place an engineer for two yellow cake. The University here is going to allow you to get more workers. This spot here gets you three generic workers, which are those gray ones, in response for placing a guy. The next one will get you an engineer, and the next a scientist, while the last one gets you either an engineer or a scientist, but you must pay three money. Bomb design requires you to place both an engineer and a scientist on the spot, and it's the only spot in the game that requires two workers to be placed on it at the same time. When you do this, you're going to pick up these three cards and choose one. You're then going to pass them to the next player, who is also going to choose a card, and you will get the last card. So you're going to end up getting one more card than everyone else for taking this action, and I'll explain bombs momentarily. The reactor and enrichment plant is going to allow you to turn yellow cake into plutonium or uranium, and you would pay the required resources here, and you would move your marker up on the track to show that you either made plutonium or uranium. There's a spot over here that maybe I kind of glossed over, and you, if you place a worker here and pay three money, it's going to allow you to move your spy marker up by one each time that you place a worker there. Also, on that turn, you may place on the number of buildings here that your marker is on of your opponent's buildings. So it allows you to use your opponent's buildings, denying them the ability to use them. The airstrike spot is going to be a spot that allows you to damage your opponent's buildings. And first, you would have to eliminate all of their fighters using your fighters, and then you would be able to bomb them in order to deal damage to their buildings. The repair spot allows you to pay five money, and when you do so, you're going to be able to repair up to three damage from any of your buildings. However, anytime you take this action, you're also going to allow your opponents to repair one, two, or three damage for two, five, or ten money. Now, on your turn, as I said, you're either going to be able to place or take workers back. And so let's say you placed your worker here, and you got those three generic workers from the supply. That's the only spot you would place on the general board for your turn. But what you would be able to do is place on any buildings that you have built in your own area, or if you took the spy action, place on any of your opponent's buildings up to the number on this chart, in order to take additional actions. So you could be getting more yellow cake, or getting money or fighters, or getting more guys in order to use. And you're going to get all these immediately when you take the benefit. Additionally, anytime you take a worker placement action, you're going to be able to take what are called bomb actions. And there are three possible bomb actions you may take on your turn. The first is that you may build a bomb. And if you look at bombs here, they're going to tell you how to build them. In order to build them, you're going to have to commit the number of workers listed at the top and the right type, so a scientist and two engineers. And you're also going to need to pay four plutonium by moving your marker down on the plutonium track. And you would put this into play. And it's going to be worth nine victory points unless you satisfy a different condition later. Another option is that you may pay two money to load a bomb. And loading a bomb requires you to pay one bomber from your bomber track and to pay the amount of money on here. So it's going to be two for this one, but it may be three for a different bomb. And you would load this onto one of your bombers, and that's just basically a bomber that you lose permanently. But in order for doing so, or in response of doing so, you're going to get one of these tokens to go on top of your bomb, and you're going to get five additional victory points. The final option is that you may test one of your bombs. And testing bombs is going to allow you to get more points for all of your plutonium bombs, because plutonium bombs are unreliable, and you need to test them first. And the first person to test one of their bombs is going to sacrifice any plutonium bomb, and they're going to get the highest one of these tokens. Now, this is going to be six additional victory points in the game, but they're going to lose all the victory points from the bomb that they sacrifice. 
However, all of their plutonium bombs from this point on will be worth the higher victory point value, so it may be worth it early on to sacrifice a bomb in order to make all of your other bombs worth more points. The other option a player has instead of placing workers is to remove workers. Uh, and when they do so, they're going to first take all of their workers off of the board. So, in this case, green would take all of their workers off of this board, and additionally, these generic workers are greens as well. The generic workers, the gray ones, are going to go back to the supply, and all gray workers on this board would go back to the supply, whether or not they were greens. So green's gonna return all of these to their player area, and in addition to that, they're going to remove all workers from buildings in their own area, and all of their workers that they had placed on their opponent's building if they had used the spy. After doing this, play will pass to the other player, and they will then take their turn. The objective of the game, in the long run, is to score a certain amount of victory points by building these bombs, which are the only way to get points. Uh, it's going to change for the number of players, and whoever reaches that amount of victory points first is going to be the winner. And so that's The Manhattan Project by Minion Games. Uh, and you might have realized that there's a little bit of a twist to this, that you're going to be placing your workers onto the board, and as long as you don't retrieve your workers from the board, you're going to be in a situation where you are blocking your opponent from taking that specific action. And the same can be true for using their buildings through the spy action, and the same can be true for using the generic workers in order to hold up places so that your opponent can't put down onto the board. Now, in addition to that, you also have the uh, spy aspect of the thing, so you can actually lock them out of their own stuff, and you have the ability to damage their buildings in order to directly prevent them from using something which you think is vastly to their benefit, which you can't access. So there's a lot of player interaction, both in a direct manner and in an indirect manner of simply locking them out of a spot. Um, I really enjoyed the game. I'd say that it's got a nice feel to it. It's still relatively simple in that you're simply just placing workers or retrieving workers, but the combination of ways that you can interact with your opponent makes for a fun uh, and different experience than a lot of other worker placement games. So I can definitely suggest this one uh, to anybody who's a fan of worker placement games, a very nice title for Minion Games. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.